a couple seconds to go live and then we will be off and running okay. all right well thank you so much um everybody joining us today welcome to our uh, rhapsody live uh, webcast q and a my name is kristen moore i'm the u.s direct sales manager here at powell flutes i'm joined by the wonderful suzanne gilcrest powell artist professor of flute and chamber music at new york university steinhardt school of music suzanne welcome thank you so nice to be here great to you in person too, instead of hearing you on the phone only. I know, yes. We've had lots of phone conversations over the past few months as you were trialing head joints, which is the topic of our webcast today um, with the title Head Joint Discoveries. I thought it would be fun for you to share, um, you know, kind of about your journey and the process of head joint trialing. Um, if for those of uh, our audience members who have caught recent webcasts, um, you'll know that we did one back in January with another Powell artist, Norley Garcia, um, and our headrant maker, Lindsay McCord, and really dived into the nuances of how they're made and um, what you'll feel when you're playing. And so it's always great to have another perspective. And um, for Suzanne, who just went through that process, finding a new one, um, I thought it would be fun for everybody to kind of hear what it's like. And of course, the big question is, did you find a new head joint? <laughs> well, yes, I did. <laughs> I That's should, good. <laughs> I should preface this by saying that I, this was, you know, not part of the grand plan. Um, I was not actually looking for a head joint, but um, well, you had this, this wonderful idea and then it, it just kind of took off from there. But yes, I did, as you know, I, I did find the one and it's the um, soloist one, silver, um, tubing with a 14 karat rose gold lip plate and riser. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, can't wait to hear it in person. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully soon enough, we'll, we'll have live performances and I'll be able to get down to New York City. But, um, you know, I'm so glad that you found something that really was a good fit for your sound. Um, and so Suzanne, I think it's always nice too to hear um, what context you play in and a little bit about, um, you know, what you do musically for your career. Well, I um, primarily play in a trio with a um, violist and a cellist. Um, the name of the trio is Eight Strings and a Whistle. Um, my husband coined that name many, many, many years ago. <laughs> um, so we play we play a variety of repertoire i mean it's you know it's most people know there's not it's not like there's this uh breadth of repertoire coming spanning the centuries um for this combination so most of it is contemporary most of it is written written for us um but we also play original works from baroque era as well as early 20th century and then a few things in between. Um, but yeah, primar primarily it is music that's been composed for us. Um, so it's a, it's a very um, hmm, unique sound, I think. Um, it's not, not like playing, uh, definitely not, not like playing a string trio. It's not like I'm trying to be a violinist. Um, and it's definitely different than playing in a flute quartet, you know, with, with um, three strings. So. Uh, and it's definitely, well, completely different than playing in a wind quintet. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if I just kind of pivot a little bit back to the, you know, about the head joint, I, you know, the, the kind of sound that one looks for is, you know, you want, I mean, just as in anything else, you want to be able to blend and you want to be able to also sound like a soloist when you need to, um, but it, uh, the blending is the, is the big challenge um, I, I have found. Um, and this head joint, the new head joint gives me much more um, versatility in, in that respect. Um, and it was really, it was, I mean, we can talk about that more later, but it, was, it really was the, the ability that it gave me to do both of these things and how it changed the sound for us as a group. Um, 
yeah, it, it really made a, a tremendous difference. So um, that was that was kind of the thing that you know was like, oh yeah, you know this 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 is what I need. Um, I didn't know, but yeah, this is what I need. This is, you know, this is helping a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of hinted at this a little bit, um, you know, so knowing myself, knowing what, you know, Suzanne, the, the type of group she plays in, I just had this little spark of, you know, a wood flute might be really perfect for that context. And, you know, I sent one down for her to try and, you know, you, you really liked it. It just maybe wasn't quite the right instrument for you. Uh, you know, it was, it, it's a, the, it's a beautiful instrument. I mean, it felt great to play it. It's so, I mean, the mechanism is so elegant and so, um, oh, it just feels so wonderful. Um, and playing it, um, with, um, my colleagues with Ina and Matt, um, was so much fun, particularly with, I know it has a real name, but particularly with the baseball bat head joint, that one, but what's its real <laughs> I know <laughs> that's the classic style. Yep, yeah, but we lovingly refer to it as the baseball bat. I everybody does. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I mean, it was it it really it was loads of fun. But it I really it really meant having to play it differently. I would have to play it differently, and I wasn't sure I really wanted to change at this point in my life. Change that much how I actually go about playing the flute. Um, so it was it was more fun to play than it was to practice. But let's put it that way. Um, so I, I knew I needed to have something that I would want to practice. And I I, I wasn't so sure that the 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 wooden flute was going to inspire me in that way. And then I also felt I did miss a little bit of the or not clearly a lot of the the sound of the silver and the sound of the gold. Um, there were elements of it that I was really missing. I mean, the, the wood flute has this sort of uh, very earthy sound and maybe it has one word that that came up in rehearsal was kind of a little bit more like gritty, I guess mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it's, it's not, I don't, I'm, I, I don't quite want to quite say not clean sounding, but it's there's a there's a smoothness and a kind of a sheen that the silver and the gold have. Maybe more the gold, but it, there's a there's a there's a there's an element to it that the wood does not have. But meanwhile, it has other elements. I mean, certainly, mm -hmm. certainly, certainly playing with strings is is um, the, the balance, especially when you're playing really quietly. It was. Um, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Nobody had to struggle. Nobody, nobody was, nobody was, nobody felt like they had to really um, compromise or, or, you know, make room for one another. There was this uh, cohesion and, and, and transparency. Like we could all just hear each other really well. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun, but ultimately I, I was missing the. Mm -hmm. There's metal has a, a zip to it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there's, you know, I, the wood has, it's a little bit more mellow, you know, it still projects, you know, oh, yeah. very well as we, you know, as we all know from listening to Buddhists who can reach that back row in a concert hall. Um, yeah. But yeah, there is a little bit more of like a mellow sound to it. So, and that would be a big journey to change <laughs> to an entire, entirely different flute. So it would. I mean, I, I think, you know, if I were a lot younger, I would, I would differently about it, but, but yeah, I wasn't quite ready to take. Um, so, so that's a good message. If you want to try a wood flute, try it now yes. <laughs> to our audience members, <laughs> make the change now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> Don't wait. Oh, no. Absolutely. So after you try, but, you know, trying that wood flute kind of opened up like, oh, maybe there's some other possibilities with different metal head joints. And so that's when we kind of went down that path. Yeah, well, what, we, what I did first was, um, first, I don't even remember what order, what se the sequence, well, I do remember later, but we had the wooden head, uh, the wooden flute, and then I tried the, the head joints, that you, the wooden head joints that you sent me on my flute. Mm -hmm. And I like that a lot. 
but I was still felt like I was missing something. And especially if I wanted to really, there were certain things I really wanted. I, I just felt like I couldn't quite do it. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, couldn't, I didn't quite, I can't, I don't want to say power. I just couldn't quite do what I wanted to do. Sure. Um, yeah. Like, as you said, it made me start thinking like, wait a minute, this is, I don't necessarily have to accept the way things are right now. I, I, I can, it doesn't have to be me that makes the change. I can have equipment that will help, help me change and help me find more of what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, it's not always you. you know? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was when we started going down that path with, with the silver, going back to metal. Um, yeah. And you patiently <laughs> shipped me things, um, which um, that was actually in a way that's sort of was the silver lining in this pandemic situation that, you know, that we were, we weren't traveling so much. I mean, normally I would have come up to visit you and spent, spent a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the shop, but it didn't work that way. And it's, it's actually gave me, you know, it was kind of, I had a luxury of having much more time with, with, with the joints mm -hmm. and I could bring them to rehearsals with me and um we could you know I had it was really I had but took like what six weeks two months I don't know maybe longer yeah a couple months yeah, yeah. you know back and forth and a few different batches and yeah um and so you know when you would get a new batch of head joints after you admire the sparkle <laughs> um and the beautiful sights did you always have like the same process? Um, can you describe like how you went about trying them and maybe narrowing down the selections? Yeah, I first thing I did was um, go through Tafnel Gobert number four with each head. Yeah, just like boom, you know. Um, and I wouldn't and and like I would like just to get first impressions. Um, and I would like. I th I'm thinking you know, usually, cause usually I had like about four mm -hmm. to try at once. I mean, most of the time. And sometimes there would be like one where I go, nah, it's, all, it's great, but no, but, yeah, you know. Not for me, not for you. Yeah. 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 And then, um, and then I would, you know, narrow it down a little bit. Uh, like I would still go back and forth, play a lot of scales. Um, and then because I was in the midst of preparing for a live stream, um, I sort of would, I would just practice the repertoire I was working on um, and just see what it, what it did. Um, and, and I would kind of narrow it down from there. Um, I would, I, the, the repertoire I was working, oh yeah, but also I have um, a piece by Ingrid Stotzel on my, on my music stand called Leonardo Saw the Spring. So I pulled that, I was, it has like a lot of really beautiful, soft, high register stuff. So I try that a little bit. And then I have more tab a lot also that I've been working on. So that was, so I have these like, like kind of long-term like repertoire I know well, and then repertoire I don't know so well and stuff and stuff that was in between. And um, I found that with the repertoire that I, I know the best, they're always the spots, the, the spots that frustrate you, the spots that you, you know, you want a certain sound or, you know, even, even, some, to do something with a vibrato and it, it's not happening, you know, no matter, it, it, you've been trying it for all years in some cases. Um, and it's, you just, you can't get it to, to work. And um, I'd go to those spots. Um, and, and that, that helped me sort of narrow it down a bit more, but that I, actually, I didn't really start doing that until um, <laughs> I was pretty sure I like the one that I ended up with. I mean, that was that was you know, there's some there's something that drew me in, mm -hmm. um, and I you know you find you always keep going back to the same one. You keep going back to the same head joint. You know, you're like, no, let me try this one again. But you always you just always kind of come back. You're always reaching for that one. Um, so there was a lot of that, and then uh, and then those spots, and then rehearsals. The rehearsals were really. Um, key and we had the opp opportunity also to re rehearse in the space that we were going to be doing the live stream in and that was so the acoustic was different so i had a variety of acoustic to deal with you know my house where we rehearse and then i it 
the live stream was from a performance venue. So it was um, having that opportunity also helped narrow it down a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I always recommend, you know, to customers that, you know, you need to try it in those different sound environments um, because the head joint really can sound different. Um, you know, we were even just earlier on the webcast today, did with the, the screw loose uh, tech talk. Um, Rachel has a Powell Armite head and she said, you know, when she tried it in like a very dry, uh, stuffy or practice room, it was kind of like, eh, okay. And then she took it to a concert hall and it was like, that's the one. Like it was yeah. like, oh my gosh, it sounds incredible here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's so important and, and yeah, by yourself with your, with your colleagues. So did they, you know, did you get a lot of feedback from them and, you yeah. know, did they <laughs> have like clear favorites and. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, they, if, if, <laughs> the first, the first thing they said was, um, how did I put it? Uh, like, are, are we supposed to like just hate them like automatically? That was like, that was like, are there rules, you know? Um, like, <laughs> should we just like say absolutely not? <laughs> that was, so we, we got that cleared up. And then, um, yeah, they would, you know, they, the first times around, they were like, oh yeah, this is really cool. This is really fun. No, I don't like that one as much. I mean, that, you know, that sounds great, but I think I like this one better, you know, comments like that. But for the, we actually, we call her Wallamina is the name of, um, is the name of the head joint and um, Wallamina's case. <laughs> so not Wilhelmina, but Wallamina um, in her, in her case or his case, I don't know. Um, there is a, a piece that we're currently playing by, um, by, a, by a Cuban, well, there are two pieces, but this is one by a Cuban composer um, named Beatrice Corona. Um, and it's, it's actually, we're cheating a little bit. It's actually for flute and strings and we've, we've kind of done an arrangement of it, but it's a very uh, beautiful, beautiful flute solo. And um, we, tried it in the venue and um, Matt, our cellist, we got to the end and he just spitted it, like, you know, and just said, buy it, <laughs> so said, buy it. Um, and that was, yeah. So, I, and it, I mean, I mean, we all knew at that point, but you know, I that, that had that, it was a very funny moment that had that kind of affirmation. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it's funny because sort of, Coincidentally, I mean, there's another uh, totally opposite Cuban piece that we play, and we know we know backwards and forwards um, by a young guy named uh, Jorge Amado, and um, that also, you know, being able to do like it, it's like completely opposite end of the spectrum. It's very, very. Uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but it's really out there in your face piece. Um, mm -hmm. Really, like a lot of big playing, a lot of has a lot of Afro-Cuban rhythms in it, and it just. It just kind of, you know, just had so much zip and also, but the sound, again, the sound had this breadth to it that I really wanted. And, and, and it's that, that width and breadth that mm -hmm. for me really, that really spoke to me. At the same time, if I have to make it really, really thin and sparkly, I can do that too. Mm. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's what works with my instrument too. I mean, you pointed out I I have um, a vintage Powell. I mean, it's it's, it's an old lady, and um, you know, and also the the tubing is smaller. So what 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 works with this particular instrument is also going to be different than I for even for my taste. What would if I if it were sixteen as opposed to fourteen, right? It would I I don't know that I would have ended up with the same head joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great point that yeah. Yeah, it's not just about you as the player and the way you play and the sound you're looking for, but, you know, what, what works best for your flute and, you know, jives and makes it ring and it's just, you know, finding that right combination. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, Finwall, the, the 0 0.014 tubing has a certain brightness and sparkle to it, but you still want to be able to find that color palette that you need. Yeah. Full spectrum. Um, so to be able to really discover that and realize it is, is special. I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's really, I mean, and it's, it's nice to know, 
you know, you can still grow. You can still, or you can, you have the means to grow, you know, it's, yeah. it's I guess that answers my, my next question for you is, you know, did you learn anything about yourself and your playing in the process? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, I mean, yeah, I think you can hear that. Yes. I learned a lot about myself. I learned that. Yeah. I, yeah. I can change or that I, I, if I want to change, it's possible. I'm not, you know, I don't have to be, um, I don't, I don't have to be confined to this one, one mm. color palette or one area, but also I think more importantly, I've changed. I'm, I'm, I'm a more complicated person than I was 20 years ago, right? And so what I want out of playing my instrument is different than what I wanted then. And so I, I'm, I don't, I don't know that I would have ended up with this head joint 20 years ago, right? I don't know because I, I was a different person then and what I was looking for was different. So, you know, now I, I don't want necessarily Oh, it's so hard to describe, but you know, maybe this perfectly beautiful, pristine sound. You know, maybe I, I want, I want that, but I want something else too. Mm -hmm. I want, some, you know, I, it's probably not the best way to put it, but I, but what I'm looking for, my concept of sound has changed. Yeah, um, and I didn't real, I almost didn't realize it hmm. until. So until I started trying, yeah. all these, you know, all these head joints. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes we want to play with, like you said before, the grit and, you know, a little bit of that rougher uh, home yeah. color, because then it makes, you know, the more pristine sound that much more effective. Exactly. Um, yeah. 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 You don't always want to sound the same way, you know, that, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> we're taught that in the beginning, but then right. later, Maybe you want to, you know, branch out a little bit, <laughs> so, but you got to yeah. learn the rules before you can break them. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I mean, I, I, I it was very surprising, very eye opening and very surprising for me. That aspect of it, probably the, more so than anything else. Um, and then when, once I realized that I just kind of went with it, I was like, okay, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's see what happens. You know, so. Yeah. With your help. <laughs> so do you have any advice for any, you know, if any of our audience members are thinking about maybe I should try some, some head joints and explore new worlds, different paths, um, any words of wisdom for them? Well, I think the first thing is that everybody needs a Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need, a person who really um, hears you um, and can be very objective and very um, open, you know. Um, and so you you need that, and you you know it's really hard to talk about this stuff with people. Yeah, I, you know. I mean, my my husband would you know. I mean, what could be more boring than me talking about? You no, know, I mean it's just. <laughs> So, and even my colleagues, to some extent, you know, they, I mean, thank God they humored me. I would, you know, show up with these boxes, you know, um, but I mean, you really, you need a person that really can, you can, you can talk to and, and give feedback to, and who will ask you questions. So that's the first thing. I mean, the second thing is think you have to be really open-minded. Mm. Um, and then you, I think you have to be really like, mm, I must say kind of honest with yourself of what, like what, what am I doing as a player? You know, what do I want to do as a player? What am I really doing? You know, I'm, I'm not an orchestral player. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, and I'm not going to be one, you know, and I don't need an instrument that's going to make me sound fantastic in an orchestral context. So that's like, I don't have to worry about that. It's almost, it's almost kind of like, um, like, a relief or, a, you know, like a, you know, like I can let go of that, you know, I can, I don't need to be all things. And especially, you know, today, you know, like how we all have a career as musicians today is so different 
than it used to be, you know, so I, I think we can be creative also in terms of our sound, you know, with that, because we don't have to be all things. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. Really that's, yeah. That's a great point. There's so many different paths that not only we can take, but we kind of have to, as you know, orchestra jobs become less and less, but you know, at the same time, chamber music has so many opportunities and, and contemporary music and different genres of music um, that we can really expand that soundscape. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's a great point. And that's kind of what I, I'm sure I asked you at some point because I like to ask everybody is, okay, what do you love about your current setup? what's missing, you know, and it's a good chance to evaluate like, okay, I wish articulation was easier or like you, you know, kind of, oh, like I really could, you know, you realized you wanted a bigger color palette. So, yeah. you know, being kind of honest with, it's, it's not a flaw. It's just something that could be better and let's find a way to maybe make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, I mean, you can, you, you can approach it in a variety of ways with your equipment, with your technique. I mean, yeah, I mean, but obviously you can't, no flute is going to make you sound, I don't know, like, it got, oh, sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> God's gift to, um, God's gift to flute playing, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, nobody's going to, no, nobody's going to make you sound that way. I mean, it's, no instrument is going to make you sound that way. So it's, um, yeah, you got to put the work in. That's yeah. for sure. You know, it's and yeah. and you know, sometimes there are head joints that maybe are better for upper register or better for low for low register or you know really like the Lumina is a very agile, quick response head joint or you know so they might address certain factors, but you do still have to be a well-rounded flutist. Yeah, and yeah, and there's no you have to decide. I think also since there won't there won't be. I mean, you, you will discover as you as you learn to play your new head joint, you know, you will discover there's certain things that are a little easier and certain things that are more difficult. But um, yeah, you have to figure out, a, you have to learn how to how to play it, you know, um, yeah. right? It's it's not, uh, yeah, it, you're not, it, it's it's not about, you know, well, I really like this aspect, so I'm going to give up on that. Like, I like, I like the lower register of this head joint. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to toss, I'm not going to worry about the upper register. It's not that, you know, but I, but you, you have to, you have to figure out how to work it. Um, mm -hmm. so. so I just, um, I, I, you know, we're kind of at like a, the 30 minute point, but I do want to, we have a couple questions and hellos, of course, from um, our audience, um, Lori, our wonderful showroom manager oh, um, says, hello, <laughs> She's right down the street from you. Um, and Ina says Wally was the winner. <laughs> I love the nickname Wally. Um, Kim, our one, one of our wonderful texts from the Screw Loose team. Hi, Tim. Kim, um, she said, have you tried a wood head on the silver body? Um, and so you had kind of said you did and it just wasn't the right combination for you. Yeah, actually really, I did. And I, I did love it. Mm -hmm. But again, it, yeah. it, there, was, I, there was an element I still needed um, that I didn't think... I was going to find mm -hmm. if I went down that road. There was just, there was one, one um, and it's, it's this, it, it was just kind of this, I want to say it's kind of like a sound like honey. It's like a, this golden, not a, a warm, um, smooth sheen, yeah. you know, and I couldn't, I could, I, I still wanted that. And mm -hmm. I could, couldn't find it on the wooden head joint, but that's not to say, you know, I, I also did not want to become one of these people who has like 12 head joints. I have, <laughs> I have a lot over there. I mean, just, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, yeah, there are the, the I, lottery, I, you know, then, then you can get the wood <laughs> for that, you know, for the colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then let's see, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. He has asked, have you ever tried a platinum Powell flute or other make of platinum? I did a long time ago. Um, I tried a David Williams um, platinum. Mm. Yeah. Or 
or did it just have a platinum? Or, no, I think it was platinum. Yeah, because it was I it was more money than I I possessed at the time, and I loved it. I did. I really loved it. Um, but I the one thing that um, I, I will say I was a lot younger then, so I was a different person. <laughs> then, <laughs> I mean, um, but I I was a little afraid, like it was all too much. Um, in my face and then I, mm -hmm. I didn't as a player, I, I wasn't gonna be able to figure out how to make it um, more flexible and do all the things that I was looking for at the time. Again, I don't know how I would feel now if I were yeah. to try, I don't know. Um, that, Kristen did not send me a platinum head giant. <laughs> That's true. I didn't. I, you know, I like to be respectful of requested <laughs> budgets and, <Yes>. you know, <laughs> Good thing. I'm not going to just tease to be mean. I try to not do that. <laughs> Although, you know, it is funny because I did have um, a wonderful friend who was a customer here yesterday and um, you can see the flutes out behind me. He was looking at yes. some, some metal flutes and just for the fun, you know, I, had him try the wood flute and he said, okay, I, I have to put this down now because <laughs> otherwise there goes my retirement money. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, maybe every now and then I'll tease, but I try not to too much. <laughs> no, you have to, because see, the, the thing that's good about it is it, it does, it perks your ears, you know, it opens up your ears and open, opens up your mind. So it's good that you do do it, you know? Yes. Yeah. I yeah, exactly. Exactly. Know your limits, but give it a shot and be open minded. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I think that's it for our questions. I don't want to keep you too long. We're getting close to dinner time, you know, uh, and uh, getting into our weekend. But Suzanne, thank you so much for joining me today and telling us all about your trial experience. Congrats on your new head joint. Thank you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. It's nice to, like I said, nice to see you. I hope I see you again soon. <laughs> I know. I know. Hopefully soon. Yes. And uh, I look forward to your upcoming recording coming out in the fall, right? With your trio. Yes. It's called, um, and nothing remains the same. Totally appropriate for this. Very what we do. <laughs> um, uh, yes. And it's, it's, November release on um, uh, Ravello Records, which is a division of Karma Recordings. Um, and as I was telling you, just before we went live, we signed off on the artwork just today or the day before. Today, I don't know. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's beautiful. It's just it's just I'm so excited. So I can't wait. I can't wait either. And uh, we'll be on the lookout for that. We'll uh, share it on our social media. But until then, thank you so much again. Thank you everybody for joining us today um, as part of our Buffet Crampon uh, Rhapsody Live series. Uh, my name is Kristen Moore. If you have any questions, you can always find us on Facebook, um, powellflutes.com. If you wanna learn more about the soloist style head joint that Suzanne has. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye. <laughs>